Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. Glad you could join us for this wonderful half hour of conversation. Before we get started, well, first of all, let me introduce my fellow panelists. Cal Potter, former state senator, and assorted other titles that I'm not going to get into. Tom Paneski, University of Wisconsin Sheboygan mathematics professor, and now acting dean of something or other? Not yet. Not yet. All so right. Next show. All right. <laughs> <laughs> really? Very good. Yeah. Ken Risto. Um, Is that because everybody's retiring? <laughs> okay. Ken, Ken Risto, who I think has actually been demoted. I'm so, about, not yet. I'm, uh, I will be st stripped of my titles um, in a month. All right. Soon, just a teacher. Just a simple social studies teacher. Finally. Thank finally. Goodness. It's been about time. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue, lawyer with the fine law firm O'Neill Cannon Holman DeYoung. But before we get started, now is the time to say thank you because to the Academy. <laughs> I've always wanted to say thank you to the Academy. Um, this particular TV show has been awarded a, an award of merit uh, at the Wisconsin Association of Public Educational and Government Access Channels 2008 Video Festival. We're going to turn in unison to our producer and say, Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Without you, this would not have been possible. <laughs> to our fine cameramen who are here, we love them. And then I'd like to thank my mother. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll move on. All the little people. <laughs> I think that we should be able to leverage, however, at least maybe a wardrobe person or makeup or something like that, at least a publicist, because nobody knew about this. And, and now we do know, and, and actually we're very proud. We're sharing the award, uh, the talk show award, and their documentary, Seniors, Religious, Children, and Sports Awards as well. So congratulations to us. It only took us four years to, to get here, but, but we're pretty happy. Do we get any statuettes or I, I think we need to work on that. Well, Terry, we'll on it, yeah. you're up in the booth. Do we get anything? Any I mean, hardware? I mean... <laughs> A oh, plaque? Get, oh, a plaque. A plaque. Or maybe right. if not a plaque, plaque, at least a certificate. Well, there it is. No, wait a minute. There, yeah. It's Thank coming up. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, you beautiful. should put it on the mantle oh, here with the clock that never moves. We're going to bring that down for the next show. because It's running. If you take a look, it's moving. Yeah, actually, that's a, it's a pretty nice <laughs> award, guys. And, and, it is um, We all here have enjoyed participating in the Donahue Group for the past three and a half, almost four years. And, it's, it's been kind of a blast, so three and a half Who's years. Counting, right? Yeah, okay, what do you exactly. got for us Exactly. Well, <laughs> Bring thank, it on. thank goodness the Memorial Day Parade is not only back, it's back with attitude. Forty units are currently... Forty? <laughs> Forty <laughs> units? Forty, Forty units. That's more units than we have in Iraq. Yes, well, not quite, unfortunately, but um, we're going to um, not only have a Memorial Day Parade, but it's going to be a parade with some amount of presence. Now, can it possibly be longer <laughs> than the 4th of July parade, no. which is one of my personal favorites, by the way. And uh, when you have little kids, you have to go to the parade. And I just, we just do that every single 4th of July. And it's, I wait for the bagpipers, of course, but. Um, well, that's so, exciting, 40 units, uh, when it was like, we're gonna cancel because there's no interest. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. very nice. And I think it's important for people to realize the city doesn't do these parades. It has taken on the 4th of July parade, um, and yeah. it has become very much a municipal event, but the Memorial Day parade, not so much. And um, so hopefully the high school bands, it's their last opportunity Good to be. perform so that they'll be there. And um, mm -hmm. I understand um, that Chief Kirk will be delivering the address uh, at the ceremony afterward. Which well, maybe the Donahue nice. group should walk, walk in the parade. <laughs> You know, maybe we could, have a, we could have a float in the 4th of July <laughs> parade. <laughs> you could hold up Ann Coulter's face, a little man in Ann Coulter mask. I think we'll we should get the Al chairs Franken. and move the whole set onto a flatbed. <laughs> we could move the whole set onto a flatbed. <laughs> and really do a live. Yes, do a live. We could do a parade. live oh, presentation. So, all right. Well, wow. all right. Now, just everyone calm down Let's so we don't back. lose this our is the kind of, <laughs> This is the kind of creativity that got us awards. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hair exactly. Screen, yes. The sharp political commentary. That too. Trench and political mm -hmm. commentary. So I do think it is very cool, though, that the parade is back and mm -hmm. and back uh, with some amount of uh, fervor. So and that, it's still a month away. So who knows? Maybe we'll have 60 units by the by the time we're all done. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Fourth of July parade has an excess of 70 units. So <clears throat> well, it's been as high as 100 if you count every car that the politician rides in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I. 
and it wouldn't be a parade without the politicians. So. Who, who's in charge of the parade? Do we well, know? the veterans groups are. The veterans are. groups are in charge, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I attended the meeting they had with the mayor, and I think their concern was just the apathy in terms of response. Mm -hmm. You know, you send out your postcards and nobody responds, and so I think they just kind of, kind of figured that, <coughs> excuse me, this would be a way of getting everybody's attention, and it sure did. It sure did, yeah. And so, and congratulations to the mayor for having pulled it all together, which I think he did, and yep. did expeditiously, and uh, so it all seems to be in place. So. And those are the kinds of things that mayors should be doing. Yeah. Deserves, deserves credit for getting it done. Yeah. Putting all right. Well, let's just move into something not so cheerful for the mayor these days, which is shared services. <coughs> Excuse me. I do have a cold. I apologize. <clears throat> and if I blow the top off the microphone, I apologize even more. Um, the, uh, I don't know, shared services. Tell me what you think, just in general. I, I, it's, it's just a conundrum because you have people saying, and, and it's one of those things that intuitively and uh, cognitively we ought to be able to say, makes sense, but the reality of it seems to be not quite so good. You're talking about the new communications. system? Well, the dispatch center, the, dispatch. the human human resources, uh, shared medical services. I mean, you name it, it doesn't seem to be working too well. Well, uh, <laughs> I As do a have my all... ambulance <laughs> a little problem. I mean, we did, it was ambulance was serving the county and the city, and all of a sudden, boom. No, it's Although just... it wasn't county government. I mean, that no, wasn't a shared was governmental yeah. service. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, I mean, I think the problem with the dispatch centers, I understand, is that the county sheriff's department, understandably, needs different things than the police department. It needs warrant information and uh, to be able to enter information on, on search or um, uh, arrest warrants and things like that. Um, it seemed like the city was really moving very quickly. Uh, their new tech guy, Tujer Lee, is very bright and very aggressive. And it just seems like it's kind of hard to bring it all together. Should they keep trying? Is it all silly? No, I think you try to save money, but you know, one of the problems you have, and we've talked about this before, is you have different uh, units of government serving different geographic areas, and until you go to sort of a metro government where you have a common denominator, you're serving people, not yeah. serving streets and blocks and you know these artificial boundaries that are, are more problematic sometimes than they are helpful. Um, you find that in street maintenance, you find it in sewers, you find it in, in water. You know, if you could cross some of these boundaries and start looking at the service provided rather than this jurisdictional thing of the town and the city and so on, that's, that's part of the problem. And we don't really sit down and say, do we need this town? And do we need this village? Do we need this you know, yeah. level of government when somebody right next door is doing the same dang thing and if we merged with them, we could do it for cheap. You know, but nobody talks about it in that sense. They start looking at each service and say, well, if we put them in the same room, can we save a lot of bucks? And you really don't always save a lot of bucks because you, you still have the administrators of the two services. You still have the vehicles of the two services, and there's no economy of scale. And so sometimes, I, you know, it's really, you're not getting at the heart of it. Metro government in many areas is what you need and nobody wants to give yeah. up their power. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because if you, if you had a metro government, then when a tech, some technology uh, advancement comes along, you could implement it because technology is changing so fast. But when you have to deal with four entities to implement <coughs> some new technology change, you do it and then, oh, we haven't been consulted. And yeah. We're not ready to, we like ours. So it gets difficult. It really does. You know, not, I think particularly if there's not been a history of it. I do know there's some vo volunteer fire departments in the county that have a history of sharing, <coughs> I beg your pardon, sharing um, expenses, services, equipment, and so forth. And they have written agreements. But you get a new person in who doesn't like it or you know, a different governing body or whatever, and it kind of s tends to shake things loose. So I think it is... I think it is kind of tough. Uh, well, how do we do the tax bills? Isn't that shared services? County tax and city tax? Uh, we go well, the, it, it, the, the tax bills are, are sent out by the treasurer, uh, and the treasurer collects the money and then figures out who gets what. And yeah. 
So there you go. That's a shared service, <coughs> I think. Yeah. Oh, there are shared services. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. It's just a question of taking on more. I mean, can you, in fact, merge human resources functions um, between the city and the county? I think that's huge. I think it's worth talking about, but to think that that could, one, move easily, and two, I mean, the basic question is you want to do it because it saves money. Um, I'm just not sure that that's, that that's possible. But, uh, and also recognizing that, I don't know, the city, we've talked about it before, that they're having a difficult time even finding competent and qualified people. And I don't know if the public really understands or they only get maybe a vague inkling of how difficult it is, uh, given salary schedules, uh, to really encourage quality people to go into public service. I mean, uh, on the educational side, which is what I'm more familiar with, the number of uh, superintendencies, and now, you know, on your side, the number of chancellors, chancellors who are living on the Wisconsin level, maybe we talk about that in the next episode, but um, people, uh, the number of super, uh, superintendencies are, are vacant, and the number of applicants, and their youth, and their lack of experience, and the t amount of time that they turn over so quickly, uh, really mm -hmm. speaks volume to the fact that, and same with assistant principals and principals in buildings, um, it really uh, speaks to the fact that there's just not a lot of interest in public service. It's a lot of aggravation, a lot of headaches, a lot of pressure, and uh, some folks, for all of the talk in, in the media about you know benefits and mm -hmm. uh, pension plans and sweetheart deals and passion, you know, cashing in your sick days and all the stuff, the reality is is that there's going to be a large exodus and already going on, exodus of quali qualified public servants, you may end up consolidating solely because you need, there's just fewer people available. Mm -hmm. Good point. Fewer people available. I'm just wondering, you know, because you were saying that the, the police department moved pretty aggressively on this, was it simply a matter that they couldn't wait or is this a uh, really kind of an attempt to create the architecture so that you've preempted any kind of possibility of shared no. services on the county <laughs> level. No, I... Because uh, clearly the police, I'm not so sure where they stand And actually, on I, I don't services. think it was necessarily the, um, the uh, police department. Um, I mean, they have obvious needs, and there is this new program called Pro Phoenix that would address the city's <coughs> needs. Excuse me. Um, what we do have, though, is a new um, IT person who, in the city's... Um, computer infrastructure is pretty aged uh, and, and pretty, I mean, I don't think it's changed much, time since you've been on the... No, but I, no, it hasn't. And I remember uh, the library board meets with the finance committee twice a year just to, it's a courtesy and sometimes we exchange ideas. And one of our last meetings, we got talking about uh, uh, the, the computer system and, uh, you know, the library is uh, trying to stay current with changing things to service the the community and adding these uh, very and they're costly and so we we were talking about budget issues and would certainly like to have the finance committee mm -hmm. aware of uh, our needs and they, they volunteered that their their service their computer system is ancient and old and they're trying to get rid of it <laughs> right and and the and the fellow that they hired to do it <coughs> is young and he's very bright and he's aggressive about what he wants to get done and so I think he's ready to go a million miles an hour, and then all the political forces around him are kind of pulling, pulling okay. back. I, that's my sense of it. I mean, right. I don't know for a fact, but, um, and, you know, there's just that pride like we want our own. Uh, why you don't see a lot of carpooling on major highways is because you want your own car, and you want to sit all by yourself, yeah. and, and you don't want to have to share, and I think that's a, a fairly normal kind of approach, so. I think, uh, I think that may be something that's, that's involved. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold here. Um, the Sheboygan Business Group, um, the Greater Sheboygan Committee uh, is its proper name, I, I think is a, is a great proponent of shared services. But again, they're business folks, and I don't know is how they understand the complexities of, of, of governments working together. I mean, it's, I mean, you're talking about taxpayer dollars, and so government and business really are different. Although, why not adopt some of the good business practices mm -hmm. that would make your governments more efficient and leaner and meaner, as it were, and, and so forth. So, well, 
I would just love somebody to come up, you know, it was the old Kettle Commission, you know, years ago. Um, just come up with an efficient way to run government and then let's just all sit down and agree to do it. We aren't going to fuss anymore about politics and turf and all these things. We're just all going to get together and work as one big happy family. What do you think? Under the dictator who? <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? I know we have a cold. Are you on medication? <laughs> I only wish. <laughs> a little codeine or something? <laughs> Wouldn't one that be big nice? happy family. Um, <laughs> uh, just in the way of small things, um, the bank clock is coming back. The U.S. bank clock. I didn't know really? that. Really? That's Yay. good. Right. I still occasionally look up that way. I know. It was iconic. You're never late now. <laughs> I'm never late. <laughs> Is it going to be the existing structure that's atop there, or are they going to change it all around? I think it's going to be the same. Okay. I hope. I was going to hope we get the turning one again. I really like that one. Uh, they're going to use L, it was LCD uh, rather than light bulbs. It's going to be a different type oh, of yeah. lighting facility. My, what I read in the paper. Is that digit, my, my mother and father-in-law lived in those apartments down uh, along the waterfront, uh, the, the lake, uh, the riverfront, where, no, where the chair phone A used to be, what do you call mm -hmm. those? Oh, schools? the garden toy area there. That, yeah, down, they used to live down there, one of those Water apartments. Suites. One of the elder houses. Yeah, housing. and uh, they, from their window they could see, that's how they kept uh, time, they look out the window and saw the bank clock. Yeah. We could yeah. get temperature too? I hope so. I hope so, but I did, I did enjoy in the article, they, they asked Mayor Perez for a comment, and he said, well, we're glad because the city gets multiple complaints about why the city isn't maintaining it. Oh, really? <laughs> it's the mayor's mm. fault that the clock's not working, so yeah. I think he, for one, will be happy to have it back in place. Yeah. But we, I get uh, calls occasionally. I don't know why I get the calls, or I hear, I see people in the, in the communities, and they're really unhappy with the LCD screen uh, whatever it is that the district has on its building over at Central Support because you see it for only a split second as you're heading mm -hmm. southbound on um, 9th Street and then you go into the swing and you know you can't see it anymore and they're saying you know where why did you place it there and we really want to see more it's information. too little yeah. too many words and yeah. uh, you know you can have about six words on a billboard or a placard as you're driving by and and hopefully those people were also on their cell phones and, and having a, an Egg McMuffin for breakfast as they're trying to do all those <laughs> Putting things. Putting on their makeup. And, and putting on their makeup. And, yeah. and reading the newspaper all at the same time. There was a, a, some a controversy just coming back to the city for a minute about um, appointments to the committees. Um, Ed Sirk, as we know, is the new first district alder person, uh, replacing Richard Manny, who retired. Ed is just a nice guy. Um, but the former HR director, human resources director for the city. Um, I wonder if Ed is going to have a little bit of problem, of a problem just changing roles. Um, having gone from the HR director position and trying to understand what he needs to do as an alderman, which hopefully is distinctly different than what he did as an, uh, as an HR director. Um, Good call, bad call? That's always a call that's difficult. In the legislature, for example, I chaired the education committee because I was a teacher. And I probably, uh, of my assembly committee of 13 <coughs> people, probably nine of them were either school board members or former teachers. Um, I, and then if you look at the banking committee, it were people who were bankers, bankers. or, or yeah. investment people and whatever. And what the speaker did in putting together the appointments was saying, well, these people know to trade better than anybody. They're going to deal with lobbyists. They've got to deal with uh, people who might uh, want to slip them bad information, and they can smell out what's good policy and not mm -hmm. because they've done these things in real, in real life. So, you know, you can say there's a, a, a change in how they view it, and maybe it isn't good, but the expertise that somebody brings to these committees uh, from previous life, I think, is something you ought to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. You know, agriculture committee, for example, it's usually mostly farmers. Well, obviously, it ought, it ought to be because uh, uh, there's a lot of technical things that go on in a farm situation that you want their expertise on. I just wonder how uh, different that role is going to be because, at least in our side of the, the human resource director is negotiating as an agent of the Board of Education. So I would think that in his previous position, he at least gets a sense that he's answerable to the aldermen and to the taxpayers. And I'm wondering how big a role that really will be in terms of changing the way he approaches uh, that <coughs> position. 
Mm -hmm. And the same, I would think, with, well, I think the biggest change is, is, is I don't know the structure of city government, I would assume that he would be sitting and listening to potentially uh, grievances, that he once would be sort of, if you will, the prosecutor, that's really not the right term, but mm -hmm. he would be the one presenting to a, is, is he sit in as, on that committee as a person who listens to or hears and makes determinations about labor grievances and contract disputes? <clears throat> Actually, um, or is that a different I, group I, altogether? When I was on there, we, it, that was just handled between the personnel director and the, the other the grieving parties, and the committee never, never participated unless it was an unusual situation where we were asked to. So right. it was usually The Civil just, Service Commission does here. Um, okay. does hear some oh, of those okay. grievances right. as well, <clears throat> although from a represented, represented employee perspective, I mean the collective bargaining agreements um, uh, really govern those kinds of things. And, yeah. But the police have their own, their own, and police and fire have of course the police and fire commission, and so it does get to be a, you know, a pretty complex, complex routine. But I just think sometimes when you're changing roles, it's hard to remember that you're doing more policy work and that you have the staff that does the day-by-day -day stuff and that you don't sit as a staff person, <clears throat> as an alderman, acting like a staff person. And I think that that's going to be Ed's, it's, it's your natural inclination. Well, I know how to do that. I used to do that. This isn't the way I did it. I think we need to do it the way I used to do it. And so I think that's going to be Ed's challenge. The experience that he brings, though, I think is 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 very very helpful. And um, but we're looking for aldermen and school board mm -hmm. members, not to micromanage and not to understand all of the functions of the agency that they regulate, I mean, because they're broad policy setting bodies, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Well, City I've council maybe a little less so. It sh maybe it should be a little more broad. But I know in the school board, in the in the when I was first on the school board, we had board members who were involved in the minutia of, of how schools ran. They were in the schools every day. They were like many staff people, and I don't think that advances or serves the interests of the organization. The city's a little different, yeah. but. Going back to your first topic, shared services, Ed could know whether that position, uh, uh, and, and there's no, it's really a vacant position in the sense that there's right. an acting person there right now. Mm -hmm. So he could know, because he was in that position, whether it can be effectively uh, shared with the county. Mm -hmm. And he might say, yes, it can. He might say, with a little bit of effort, we can. Or I just don't think it, because he served there. And uh, mm -hmm. that might be very helpful. Uh, in the legislature, how staff dependent were you? Um, I mean, did you, I, I suppose because they were much bigger agencies, you really did not get into the minutia of how government agencies were run? No. Um, you rely on different uh, people for different staff for needs. Uh, for example, every committee is assigned a ledge council attorney. And that, that attorney probably had been practicing education law or banking law for 20 years. And that person knows that section of the statutes backwards and forwards. So when you want a legislative history of a statute, uh, if you want the meaning of a statute, your legal counsel would be the, right there. Um, if you want to get into fiscal matters, you have the Fiscal Bureau, which staffs basically the Finance Committee, but is available to all legislators to deal with uh, areas of finance and state government. So you have different resource people that you look to for different roles and at different times. But yeah, you, they're, they're people with, you know, unlike uh, uh, popular image, uh, the tenure of people in elected office is not very long. There's very little institutional memory. Uh, well, there you go. And so you rely on staff to have that institutional memory. And it's a good thing sometimes that we do have legislators who do stay around for a while or local people who stay around for a while because they do, amongst their colleagues, have that institutional memory. So yeah, you rely on staff for, for not only the expertise but the institutional memory that you need. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, and uh, um, I don't know. I don't. Not sure. I'd really necessarily want to be on the city council these days, but <clears throat> or the county board. But again, we had spoken about this. Well, at you our got Mike Vanderstein now. So he formerly was a city alderman, who's now the county board chair, and a swell guy. If anything is going to kind of at least getting people to talk, he can. He certainly 
uh, is uh, affable and easy to get along with. Mm -hmm. And uh, if somebody from the city side, uh, he knows the city, uh, the city uh, directors because he's worked with them as an alderman. So it's an opportunity for something to go uh, to, to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. And I think Bill Gehring, the former county board chair, did a fine job, but he was a county person, and which is good. I'm, you, you need somebody there to represent county interests. But I think Mike is a downtown business person for mm -hmm. uh, at least 20 years. I get a phone call saying it was really 28, but um, uh, Mike has been around for a long time, and he is cordial and affable and, um, and knows mm -hmm. his stuff with respect to that. So I think there may be you know, maybe some opportunities there. We don't have any time today to get into the idea of a, of a city administrator. <clears throat> You know, the county has a county administrator and then a county board chair. And uh, I know that there's discussion going on about a city administrator and a mayor who would essentially act as the county board chair. So, uh, interesting. But assisting, um, and I'm just bringing this up again, one, because I'm delighted, two, and <laughs> I'm running the show. <coughs> there it is. There Which, it is. There Which it is. really never happens in my life. Let me just tell you that I'm in control of so little that the these dragon lady is small. <laughs> these she three cordial red. gentlemen who just allow me to, you know, say or do whatever I want is it's a pleasure. That's why we continue on here. <laughs> Four women on the county board now, and there's a very nice picture on the front page, and um, uh, I think. Uh, and all of them were saying, and I think rightly so, it's not a big deal that we're women. Uh, and, uh, and it's not a big deal when you think there are 35 members on the county board. 34, yeah. yeah. I mean. I, and I'm going to say it is a big deal. And I think women do, not always, but often bring a different kind of well, perspective. Well, I think that's true. And, um, and I think in all elective office, whether it's a state legislature yeah, or yeah. Congress or whatever, uh, I think women are, are totally re remiss and not... Uh, pushing f more to get the equal representation, and, and they certainly are terribly underrepresented. Yes, but they are. as we're as we're saying goodbye right now, we say hello to uh, joining Connie Ziegelbauer, who's been on the board uh, for quite a long time, uh, Peggy Fighter, Fran Damp, and Chris Wheeler, who wrote won in a write-in election. I mean, it, two write-ins. I mean, yeah. there you go. I mean, it's it's an odd political life, but we. Uh, we wish them well, and as uh, Ms. Wheeler said, it's nice to see women getting involved in politics, period. And she's a home daycare operator, and so I would uh, tend to agree. But uh, thanks for joining this award-winning show, and we hope to see you back again.